Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting seaside hydrangeas and I'm sipping on some spiced apple tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, magenta, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, and green oxide. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And I have three brushes from my brush line, Michelle the Painter brush line. We've got a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a half inch wide synthetic bright brush, and I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our sky, our water, and the base coat for our table. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are blue, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a nice light blue sky that's gonna be a little bit darker at the top. It's gonna to get a little bit lighter down towards the horizon. And then my water is gonna be a little bit darker at the top and lighter as it gets down towards the table. And then we're just gonna use a base coat of brown for the table. So what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a sky blue. So I have magically done that so you can see where I'm headed. And I'm actually gonna use my small brush to demonstrate, uh, just to mix the paint so you can see how I got there. So I used a, a good amount of white, a little bit of blue, cause the blue is really powerful and I just want a light blue, and then a tiny bit of brown into it. The brown helps to kind of desaturate it a little bit, making it so it's not too vibrant blue. I just want this to be a nice soft, kind of like a robin's egg type of blue in order to give myself uh, the essence of a nice blue sky without it stealing the focal point away from my beautiful flowers. So this is about where I'm headed. So now I'm gonna put that small brush away and I'm gonna take out my large brush to start my painting process. But before I start painting, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers. One is gonna be for where my horizon line goes and one is gonna be for where my table starts. So if you find yourself about halfway on the left hand side, up or down your canvas, so about halfway here. Then you're gonna go about halfway between that and the bottom of your canvas, right about here. And then you'll go up about an inch and a half and down about an inch and a half and make two markers. So I've got one marker here and one marker here. Then I'm gonna do the same exercise on the other side. You could certainly use like a brush or some kind of measuring tool to see how high you did it on one side and then go over to the other side. You, it doesn't matter whatever method works for you, but I'm gonna go about halfway up or down like this, halfway between those two, and then about an inch and a half above it and about an inch and a half below it. So that's all I'm gonna do is make myself some markers so I have a guide or a kind of a visual stopping point. I loaded my brush with my light blue and I'm gonna start the top of my canvas with this light blue. I'm gonna come down about, I would say about a third of the way down that sky. So 
if this is where my sky ends, this is about a third, and this is about a third, somewhere in through here. It doesn't have to be exactly as mine. So somewhere about here is where I'm gonna start picking up white and my light blue at the same time. So I have white and light blue on my brush at the same time, and this is gonna start the transition of my sky getting lighter and lighter as I come down my uh, come down the sky. So I just picked up white with a little bit of my light blue, and after I get about this far down, I'm gonna do that white with a little bit of my sky blue one more time, and then the rest of the sky, I'm just gonna be picking up white paint and on my dirty brush. So what's gonna happen is my sky is gonna get lighter and lighter as I come down. So I just picked up white paint with my dirty brush. So I still had some of that light blue in the bristles of my brush. And then I just kind of get it to mix in with the, or blend in with the color above it. And now I'm just gonna pick up white paint so the, the light blue is working its way off of my brush every time I reload with the white paint. So I just keep on painting it with that dirty brush and new white paint on it and you can see my sky gets lighter and lighter. I'm coming right down to my markers and I'm just gonna bring it straight across. I, those markers were still a little wet so that was surprisingly an easy way for me to make a horizon line unintentional but that worked out for me now what i'm going to do i'm not going to wash my brush but i'm going to pick up blue and brown so cobalt blue and brown is going on my brush a little bit of both just right at the tip let me pick up a little bit more brown so i have just a little bit of cobalt blue and brown and i'm going to go right across that horizon line i'm going to do it fast because for me, sometimes the faster I go with a big line like this, the straighter it is. I have my starting and my stopping point, so if I kind of go back and forth pretty quickly, I will typically get a pretty straight line. So I've got those two colors on my brush, and I can see where my, where my line is, so I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth. I don't need this to be a super clean line, so if I just kind of go back and forth like this, I will end up getting a nice soft horizon line and it'll be seemingly pretty darn straight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep picking, I'm gonna pick up blue and brown one more time on my dirty brush to just get the top of this water pretty dark, but again, I don't need it super duper dark. I just kind of am cleaning that up and making sure it looks like it's fully executed. Now I'm just picking up white to finish out my water. So without washing my brush, because I'm just picking up white, what's gonna happen to my water is exactly what happened to my sky. It's gonna get lighter and lighter as I come down towards what will be my next two markers. And because this is water, I don't need it to be, or desire it to be as smooth as my sky, because it could be ripply, it could have waves in it, it could have lots of movement to it. So I don't have to necessarily be terribly concerned about that water being perfectly blended or perfectly smooth. So now that I've got this done, I'm going to wash and dry my brush, just making sure I brought it all the way down to those markers. And this line does not have to be clean. I'm washing and drying my brush, and then I'm gonna pick up brown paint. So just getting a lot of that white off and giving it a good squeeze in my paper towel. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, just you know, you want to get the moisture out of it. And I'm going to pick up brown paint. So my brown is transparent or translucent. So I'm not going to use a lot because I want there to be some light spots and dark spots to it. So I have a little bit on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of go back and forth and almost just rub it in. I'm using this as my base coat for my table, so it allows me to have, um, I'm going for kind of a weathered wood type of look because of from where I come from, <laughs> there's this place called Cape Cod, which is by, by the ocean, and it has a lot of weathered wood <laughs> appearing in all of, its, um, all of its architecture and stuff, and they have hydrangea 
festivals in this little town. So I'm going to go for the type of wood that they have and the type of flowers that they have. So this will start my weathered wood appearance for my table. And then we're going to be using our piece, uh, let's see, actually we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to finish our table. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, and brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have mine having little kind of slats in it, so I might have three or four pieces of wood going across. And then I'm gonna put kind of like a gray wash or a, like a weathered type of gray look on it. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm going to be putting a tiny bit of brown and black on the end of my brush. So a little bit of brown and black on the end of my brush. And I'm just gonna give myself these horizontal lines going across, um, across the area. You can have as many as you want, but I do recommend kind of giving yourself little markers on the side. So I'm gonna do um, four slats for mine, and I'm, so I'm gonna do three little markers. One, two, three. And then they don't have to be, you know, this bottom one can be any size. They can be exactly the same or not. It's <laughs> totally up to you. It would make sense if they were to get a little bit wider the, as they come down the, um, the thing, but nobody's gonna notice once you put the, the whitewash on and everything else is um, covering them. So then I just have that black and um, brown on my brush and I'm gonna connect my markers with a real kind of light sketchily type of line. I don't need it to be anything really deep or dark because again, I'm gonna be putting another color in between these, which is gonna be the lighter color on top of these slats. So this is just really um, intended to give me a little bit of a groove or a shadowy type of mark in between those pieces of wood. So I'm just kind of going back and forth with this darker color like that. So now that I've done that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a kind of a lighter gray type of color. So I'm gonna use my dirty brush with a little bit of white, a touch of black, and a touch of brown. So just this gray, medium gray tone for maybe a little bit darker than that. There we go, a little bit darker, there we go. So once I've got this, I don't need a lot on my brush. I just wiped it off on the side of my palette so I don't have much at all. And I'm going to be loosely just um, applying this gray on top of some of this brown. I don't need to do it all the way. I wanna have some little peekaboo spots of that brown underneath so I, I have hardly any paint on my brush. And what's happening is it's allowing me to see some of that brown color underneath. I'm going in between my dark marks, those dark stripes that I put, and I'm really just kind of rubbing it on at this point because you can still see the wood grain of sorts from the brown underneath. So by using just this scrubbing technique to get this on, it's allowing it to look as if this wood is just kind of weathered as opposed to painted gray. So it's just a little bit of a, um, of a thin layer of this gray on top of it. And again, not overdoing it. So now I'm gonna pick up my gray plus a little bit of white. So very little bit on my brush, gray plus a little bit of white. And this is where I'm gonna just accentuate some of these areas, especially the edge where I'm meeting the water. So you can see the difference between the water and my um, table. And this is where I would clean up any little edges. Like I can see that there's a little bit of a gap between my table and my water. So of unpainted canvas. So I just make sure that I get that all the way covered and then I'm just lightly going over with this um, with this mixture of gray plus white on my brush. You can even dip your brush in your water uh, your water a little bit just to give you a little bit extra moisture on your brush and then just tap it off on your paper towel. That's going to allow you to get these 
uh, that transparency in the paint so you won't overdo it and you won't overpaint it. And then I just kind of keep giving myself these little bits of layers here and there to accentuate that gray value without, again, overdoing it. And you can keep fiddling with this. Maybe you have a lighter area where it feels like the sun might be... Um, might be illuminating the wood a little bit more maybe the the wood is a little bit more sun bleached like over on this side that's what happens to the these old beach going pieces of wood they get bleached from that sun so you could maybe have a lighter area over on one side versus the other side and that or maybe one side is catching more of the sun today than the other side so you can certainly play with those values of it and then once you've got this done, we're gonna be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put this medium brush, yeah, the medium brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our flowers and the vase. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk to do the outline, and I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of markers and basic shapes and by the time we're done we'll have something that has the resemblance of some flowers and a vase <laughs> that we'll be able to utilize during the coloring in process of painting. So I'm going to start with the basic shape of the flower heads. So these kinds of flowers that I'm representing have a real large ball type of a shape for the, um, for the main part of the flower. So I'm going to be doing three. You can certainly do it as many as you want, but I'm going to do three large ball shapes. I'm going to have them all up above my horizon line, and I'm going to put the one that's closest to us or in front, the f I'm going to put that one into place first. So if I find myself about the center of my canvas, what I'm going to, which is somewhere about here, I'm thinking. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the left of that, maybe about two or three inches, somewhere in through here. That's going to be the, the, um, the farthest left I go. I'm also going to come down about two inches. So that'll be the bottom of it. I think I'm going to use, I have a pink chalk to show you where that is. So that'll be kind of like the left and the right. I'm going to go all the way up to the top maybe about three inches away from, uh, four, three or four inches away from the top. And then over on the right hand side, I may be about three inches in from the right as well. So this just kind of gives me a, a barrier how large I'm gonna have this first one. And when I go to connect these, I do not need a perfect circle. So you can have it kind of like wavy along the edges. That's gonna help to make you, um, force you to kind of make this more of an organic type of a shape down in through here. I don't know how well you can see my white. So I'll just put a little bit of my pink chalk in through there. So the next one that I'm gonna do is the one to the left of it. So I'm gonna come down from here, maybe about in, in this vicinity in through here. This one's gonna go off of my canvas and it's gonna to connect to somewhere in through this region. And I'm not gonna have it much higher, maybe about an inch and a half higher than the bottom of my canvas. So I'm gonna switch to my pink so you can see down here. So I'm gonna have this one going off the canvas a little bit and that way it'll make it look, again, nice and organic, something like that. And then I'm gonna have one more up at the top. So I'm gonna to go to the left of the center of this one a little bit and then maybe up this one a little bit in through here and then away from the top of my canvas, maybe about an inch and a half or so. And this will be the one that kind of sits behind them. So something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of leaves on the underneath the flower. I'm gonna use my pink chalk so you guys can see. And I'm not gonna make any of them fall below my horizon line. So I'm just gonna have a couple of um, kind of pointy type of leaves coming out of the bottom. So maybe something like that. Maybe this one kind of comes over like this. And then I'll have, we'll say another one in this vicinity, somewhere in through here. And again, yours don't have to be exactly as mine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some stems. So I have three flowers, so I'm gonna have three stems and I'm gonna bring my stems just past maybe about an inch into my, um, into my table in through here. So I'll have one maybe like that. I've got one from maybe this one over here is gonna 
travel over in this direction and then I have that one from back there so maybe this one kind of comes in through there. Then I just need my vase. So you want to kind of position the vase where it makes sense that, that the, the flowers are not going to fall over. Obviously the vase has to go on the outside of your stems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of come over to the left from my stems a little bit and that's going to be kind of a narrow part of the vase. I'm going to get it to bump out a little bit and then come back in. So to kind of give yourself a little bit of a um, barrier, I'm going to have the bottom of mine coming up just below my stems. So somewhere in through here is about the bottom of my vase and I'm going to just kind of bring it out like this so I know how far out I want it to go, so something like that. And then I'm just going to kind of connect the, the, the top to my, my bottom. Your vase can really um, look any way that you want. You could have maybe straight sides or maybe yours is more of like an hourglass type of a shape. It's totally up to you how you want that to appear. Um, and then just kind of try and get those shapes to match from one side to the other. And then we're going to be using our large brush for the next step so you can um, put your chalk away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for the flowers. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are magenta, blue, and black. And what I'm in essence going to do is I'm going to be doing a variety of the blue and the magenta for the base color of these three um, flowers up and through here. But I don't necessarily need nor want a solid color, so I'm going to be using those two colors in conjunction with one another. Maybe this flower turns out a little bit more blue. Maybe this one turns out a little bit more purpley because I'm using the, the pink or the magenta and the blue at the same time. And maybe this one turns out a little bit more magenta. These flowers can come in many different values and colors. They can be white or pink or yellow or purple or blue or all kinds of colors. But there is one type of variety of them that has these multi colors in them and that's the one I'm opting to do. So if one of them is a little bit bluer or pinker or magenta-y then that's great. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with this one back here. I'm also going to be adding a little bit of shadow at the bottom of them so we can start that dimensional element and then I'll work my way towards here. So up in this one up here I'm going to pick up mostly magenta with a little bit of blue on my brush and as I'm doing this I really am not doing anything fancy I'm just kind of looking to get some nice colors in here nothing um, no specific brush stroke you can kind of just dab the brush as you're as you're going so that way you have a real good textural element to it but you don't need it to be anything perfect other than maybe getting some nice organic kind of bumps along the sides. So that's that one. Maybe this one I'm going to be using kind of equal parts of my magenta and my and my blue. So this one turns out maybe more purpley and you can certainly um, s alter the quantity of that paint on your brush as you're going through it. The, It'll be easier if you can see the difference between the color from one to the next as you go through the painting process. So because I am used more blue on this one, this one is turning out a little bit more purple for me. So that's a beautiful part about using these multi colors at the same time so that way you can kind of shift. This one I'm going to use more blue. So I'm not washing my brush, I just picked up more blue. And then as I'm going through this one, you can see it's going to turn out more blue than that one. And then I'm just going to kind of wiggle my brush along the edges here. You don't have to stay 100% true to your, um, to your chalk mark because this is a flower and <laughs> we're just having fun with it. You can overlap and stuff in through here, over here. I'm just going to kind of bring it down to that, um, to that line and then just kind of maneuver my brush around, making sure I have a good coverage in through here. So now before I go on to 
um, my base coat for these little flowers, I'm going to add a little bit of darkness in the, the base of these. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to kind of wipe it off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up a teeny bit of black paint on my brush. Not a lot, just a teeny tiny bit. And I'm going to put just a little bit of shadow in the areas that I feel are going to dip behind the neighboring flower or would be at the bottom of a flower. So just a little bit of black in through here and just kind of tapping it in in order to give myself a little bit of darkness. I'm going to do the same thing over on this one. Just kind of scooting it in between this little flower in through here. And it doesn't have to be a, a perfect coat. You can even put some in between little petals in through here. So I'm just kind of tapping it in so I've got the those dark notes underneath that um, that base coat or the the petals as we start to build them and maybe just a tiny bit down in through here so now that i've got this done i'm going to just wash actually i'm going to switch to my small brush in order to give my base coat of a couple of petals that have fallen on the ground so i'm going to pick up magenta and blue at the same time and i'm just going to kind of have fun with wiggling in a couple of little flower petals that maybe have fallen off of the flower. Maybe now I'm going to pick up a little bit of magenta and I'm all I'm doing is just adding some little spots of color down in through here. You could certainly have lots of fun with this but I'm just giving little little tiny pieces of petals down in through here and then we're going to be uh, using this small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the stems and leaves. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are green, brown, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be putting my stems into place and the leaves into place with just a base coat of green. And then we're just gonna highlight and shadow them to give them a little bit of dimension. So I'm just putting green on my brush. I'm not gonna be doing anything fancy for the base coat other than painting it with green. And as you're going through this process, if your pencil or chalk, whatever you used for a drawing um, tool, if you can see that through your paint at this point, it's okay. Don't worry about it because we're gonna be doing some, we're gonna put highlights and shadows on these so that'll, that'll cover that up. As I'm doing these stems on the base coat, I. You know, I'm kind of thinking about which one is going to go in front of the other one, but it's not terribly important to decide that on this base coat when we get to um, putting a little highlight and shadow on it. I think actually this one has to travel up in through here. That looks like it was missing. <laughs> so it looks like it, it should be going up in this direction, I think, something like that. And then um, you can even make them a little bit wider at the base as they're going up towards that flower too, if you want to. If you feel like your stems are a little bit too skinny, you could certainly widen them up. Sometimes the, the chalk mark will just, you know, make it in whatever thickness that is unless you um, kind of purposely make it wider. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do my my leaves. And again, I'm not doing anything for the base coat other than painting them green. So this way um, I can just utilize a real natural tone. I use this green oxide because it has a, a brownish tone to it or um, kind of a brownish hue to it. It's really a nice natural kind of green for me and it works well as base coats for any kind of foliage that I'm using um, or anything that I want to have that earthy kind of tone to it. Um, so it, as long as I'm just using a nice thin coat right now, it'll dry quickly for me so I can go ahead and you know, on the fly, just add some highlights and shadows and, and it'll look remarkably realistic once we're done. So I'm just kind of getting this thin coat on, bringing it all the way to my chalk mark and just bringing it down on those edges, something like this. So now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and do little details on my um, on my stems. So I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black paint. I'm going to have the upper portion a little bit darker and then I'll give them a little bit of highlight um, 
maybe uh, some of the tips that I think would be visible. So you can use a combination of black and or black and brown. I think for me right now, I'm just gonna start with a little bit of black just to get this um, darkness going. And now is the time where I gotta decide who's which one's in front of which. So I think I'm gonna have this left one be the front one, and then these other ones are gonna just be in, in back of it. So I put the black on, I'm gonna go ahead and scoot a little bit up in through this one as well and whatever one is behind the other one you, you just want to put that the paint in that direction and these are inside the um the vase so they could be really dark underneath these big huge flowers so just know if yours are pretty dark that's okay i just picked up some green without washing my brush so as i'm pulling this down um, into the base of the into the base of the vase, <laughs> it will take on um, a little bit more of a solid color, but because I did not wash my brush, I'm getting kind of streaks of green and the darkness from, from the black. So this is just really giving myself a nice second coat, allowing me to um, be able to get those on there very well. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of green and a little bit of white. I did not wash my brush, so just a little bit of green and white. This is gonna give me just these little bits of, of highlights on some of these, maybe a little bit more of my white, just so we can visibly see these a little bit better. So there we go, that works. And you don't need a ton of detail on these um, underneath type of, um, aspects or objects because they're not the star of the show the 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 flowers are so as you're going through this process if you know if your stems aren't perfect don't worry but you know the flowers are what's gonna steal people's attention not these little um not these little stems so now that i've got that done i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to my leaves so i'm going to put a tiny bit i think i'm going to go black and brown on my brush so i washed and dried my brush and i put a little bit of black and brown just gonna close up that little gap up and through there so I put black and brown and then I'm gonna I put it up underneath the flower and then I'm gonna pull it in the direction that I feel that like the veins would go or that that you know the trajectory of that leaf coming out of the um, out of the flower would go so almost like a curve towards the point of that of that leaf so something like this in almost like a little bit of a triangle. So this one too, I still just have the green or uh, black and brown on my brush right now, giving me a nice shadow underneath here. And if you want it to be even darker, I just picked up a tiny bit more black paint just to get that to go a little bit darker. And then once I've got those shadows in there, I'm gonna uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up green just to give myself a second layer on the on the leaf itself to make sure that it's fully executed. So a second layer of green to make sure that that doesn't have any unfinished areas to it and that it blends in with that shadowy area. So you might find that you, you, you know, want to go back up into that shadowy area just to make sure that it's um, blend it a little bit with your with your green color of your leaves and then I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on so I'm not doing much to these leaves other than uh, making sure that they're green that they have a believable shape and some shadow to shadow and highlight so I just picked up a little bit of white on my dirty brush so I have green and white on my brush and I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight where I feel that that leaf would pop out the most. So this one I want to look like it's kind of curved over. So I put this highlight kind of mid, mid section and then just kind of rub it down towards that tip and then maybe rub it up in towards that center of that, of that leaf, something like that. So that just gives you a little bit of dimension on it. Maybe this one kind of just, maybe this little tip is popped out the most. So put a little bit of green, or excuse me, white, and then just fade it into the direction that you want that leaf to look like it's, you know, getting darker. So this one maybe in through here, I have this part of this leaf that's gonna be the brightest, maybe over here on the edge. And then once I have that lightness on there, I can just blend it out into the darker area. And then let it dry and see if there's any little adjustments that you feel 
would be necessary. And then we're going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our vase. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, white, magenta, and cobalt blue. And oh, and some green oxide too. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be emulating a glass vase, but you could certainly make yours into whatever you want. If you want yours to be a solid, a solid color, then go ahead and do that. Um, if you go to execute this and it goes awry, <laughs> then paint it a solid color, <laughs> but you can certainly do whatever you like. Uh, when I'm painting glass, I always have it in my head, less is more. The glass will look more realistic, kind of the less or the minimal details that you put in it because it's it's intended to look kind of see-through and, and reflective. So if I can see a bunch of stuff behind it, that's great. That's going to make it look like it's glass. And if I have kind of reflective marks on it, reflecting the colors around, that's going to make it look like it's shiny. So it'll look like glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by giving myself a little bit of an outline. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to use black and water on my brush. I'm going to, in essence, kind of re-identify the outline that I've already created with chalk. I'm going to give myself a water line where I want the liquid in my jar to be. I'll put a little bit of a bottom on it, and then we'll start to build our highlights and our liquid and our reflection and all that good stuff. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put water on my brush. So I dip it in my in my water cup and then I pick up a tiny bit of black paint. I want this to be very fluid so that way it looks transparent and I can kind of move it as it's drying. So I'm really just going to um, just make sure I don't go through wet paint here. There we go. I, I knew I was going to want my hand on here so I don't want to have wet paint. So I'm just going to kind of go down this left hand side going all in my in my chalk and then what I do is I can just wipe my brush off and I can take this and kind of push that line all the way to the outside of that um, edge of the glass. So what this is doing is kind of creating this almost bit of a gradient for that black um, to show that you know you've got this kind of exterior line but it also kind of fades into the glass itself and while i've got a little bit of that um, transparent mixture on my brush i can just kind of rub it into that glass a little bit and again that's just going to give me a little bit of transparency and help with telling the the, the story of the shape of that glass so something like that will work out for me i'm going to do the same exercise on the other side as long as I'm finished there there we go so dip my brush in water pick up a little bit of black paint so I have very fluid black paint on my brush and one side is going to be easier than the other just because we are only one-handed <laughs> so as you do one side if it's a little bit more difficult than the other side know that you're normal that happens so I'm going to take this just make sure I have enough water on my brush you can always add more paint um, so I would err on the side of more fluid on your brush to start and if you need to add more paint great if you know it's easier to add more paint than it is to take away the black so that's why i err on the side of less less is more for the paint itself and then again i just kind of push it down or push it towards this i used pink chalk or red chalk so you might detect a little bit of pink in my glass already that's just um, happenstance from the chalk that I used, but if you used um, white chalk, you won't be suffering from that. But thankfully, my flower is that same color, so it will work out just fine for me. And I'm just kind of smoothing this out using a nice continual brush stroke. That works out pretty well. And whatever remnants I have on my, on my brush, I can kind of utilize that maybe to rub in a little bit of this... Um, kind of dark sheen of sorts on that 
on that glass itself. So something like that. I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom inside my um, the bottom of my vessel. So I want this to look kind of oval. So I've got the the bottom of my glass in through here. So once I've got that and just kind of going across with my black and water mixture on my brush. This one I can be a little bit more carefree because I know that there's going to be a shadow at the bottom. And then I'm going to turn this into an oval. So a very narrow oval that's going to go behind my stems. Your stems might be up higher than mine, but if your stems are as low as mine, you'll want to scoot that line behind the um, behind the stem so it looks like they're in, nestled and sitting inside and then you can even bring a little bit of this black um, kind of shadowy streakiness up those sides if you wanted to and then once I've got this in here I'm going to give myself a little bit of a water line so I'm going maybe about halfway between my horizon and my um, my table and I'm going to do another long oval. One side is going to be behind the, um, the stems and one side is going to be in front. So I'm going to start right about here. I'm going to bring this over like this. And I, the top line skips my, um, my stems and then the bottom line goes in front of my stems. So this is going to make it look like you, those stems are inside the water. Something like this will work for me. And now I just need to start building my water and my highlights and stuff. So I'm going to do my water line. I'm just going to be doing colors from my surroundings. So I can use white. So I've got white on my on my brush. This is going to allow me to give these nice little marks of um, of liquid within that within that vessel, something like this. And I'm going kind of a little oval type of a shape so just something like this and just little little dashes will work i'm going to pick up a little bit of my magenta put a little bit of magenta in through here because that's in my flowers i'm going to pick up a little bit of my cobalt blue that's in my flowers so just giving those those little ripples of the colors within the vase will will work and put some in front of the stems and some in back of the stems and that'll make them look like the the stems are in in that water itself so now that i've got the the liquid line what i'm going to do is i'm going to put reflective marks so i'm going to wash and dry my brush i first want to just make it kind of soft and shiny so i'm going to put white with water on my brush so i have white and water and I don't have a lot I just want to give my vessel kind of a highlighted curve so I've got white and water on my brush and I'm going to take it where I feel that that vessel would pop out the most and I'm giving it almost like this fogginess so this is white plus water on my brush to give myself a little kind of foggy highlight to it and you could put this you know over the whole center if you wanted to if you if you felt that you know you wanted that to really emulate as as you know popping out a lot you could certainly do that um, but I'm, just, I'm doing it more on the right side because I feel like my light source is more on the on the right side so that's just where I'm opting to put that brightest part and then once I've got that on there, I'm going to start making some reflections. So the reflections are just going to be a bunch of streaks with the colors surrounding it. So I'm going to put some green on my brush because I have green leaves. So I'm going to put some nice, pretty reflective marks for my green leaves, maybe a little bit on this side. And that's what's going to sell this as being nice, maybe a little green in my water in through there. This is going to um, allow the viewer to understand what, what this is, that it's a reflective kind of quality to it. Maybe there's even a little down at the bottom, in the, in the bottom of the cup itself. I did some green, now I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up some cobalt blue. I'm going to put streaks of that, and I just do these nice, long, kind of continual streaks that one's getting a little away from me. <laughs> so just kind of slowing down a bit. There we go. We got, we got it now. And I like to do these long, you know, fluid type of brush strokes. So it takes on the 
um, smoothness of the vessel of that glass. It'll tell the viewer that it is nice and nice and smooth. And then once I've got that on there, I'm gonna maybe put a little bit over here and then I will put some magenta on my brush. And again, I'm just kind of going with the, with the shape of the glass. So I'm putting some magenta on my brush now. Maybe we've got a little bit up and through here. Maybe I've got some real brightness down here. I'm trying not to make it too um, systematic from one side to the next, but sometimes that will happen. I'm going to just maybe rub it in over here so maybe it's just a hue on there as opposed to just a solid line and that'll make it look really nice and shiny. And now I'm going to pick up some white. So wash and dry my brush, pick up some white, give myself some beautiful white um, marks in through here. And again, taking on the shape of that vessel and maybe hmm, I'm feeling like I want maybe a little twinkle down here and down this side as well. And cross over, cross over the lines, cross over um, one area from one area to the next uh, as on um, the outside of the glass. And then you just kind of fiddle with it. So this is looking pretty good to me. Might add maybe, I'm picking up a tiny bit of black. Maybe I add a more dramatic kind of black mark over in through here or maybe underneath here. So once you've got it on there, then just step back and say, do I want, you know, is there anywhere else where I feel like I could add some, some drama to this glass? Maybe, you know, maybe underneath these, um, these, these, um, leaves, there's a little bit more black because it's reflecting the, um, the stems, you know, so you can certainly just kind of keep tweaking it once you do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your, um, your vase done, you can wash, if you can ever finish it, <laughs> wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the shadow of the vase and we're gonna finish these little fallen petals. So I'm using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, and magenta, and cobalt blue. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with my shadows. I'm gonna be putting shadow underneath my vase and underneath my petals. I am, a, I've kind of thought and created, my light source is up, and maybe over to the right a little bit. So I'm gonna have my shadow coming down and to the left of these objects. The shadow of this is fun because my it's a glass, so it's transparent. So I'm gonna have darker edges on the exterior of the shadow. I'm gonna have darkness where um, it implying the stems, and then I'll get it to kind of fade um, where it is lighter as if the light is coming through um, through it. And then these little guys, I'm just gonna have a little bit of a shadow under them and we'll put a highlight, highlight and they'll be all set. So my shadow, I'm going to be using with black paint and a little bit of water. So I'm gonna start with black and a little bit of water on my brush, give myself a little bit of a roadmap where I want this to go. So definitely right underneath my vase is where I'm gonna start. And then once I get almost to the edge here, I'm gonna start disconnecting it a little bit from that vase. So that'll imply that the edge of this vase is going up and is curved and a shadow can get skewed. So I'm actually gonna bring this almost to the bottom left-hand corner of my canvas. I'm gonna move my canvas a little bit so I can, so I can reach it. So I'm gonna come right about over in through here and I'm gonna give this a curve. So I've got my black plus a little bit of water on my brush and I'm curving this out. I'm picking up more water right now to get this to kind of fade into my um, interior of my shadow. So something like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the right hand side. I still need it to have an exterior curve, but I want it to come in this direction. So I've I'm gonna disconnect it right about here and then my curve is gonna come back 
in this direction, something like this. And of course, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine, but this is, you know, maybe your light source is at a different angle than mine is. And then I just kind of, like I did on the glass up above, I'm kind of pushing the concentration of the paint towards the edges or exterior of this shadow. And then I'm just going to kind of fade it in towards the center of that, of that shadow. So something like this. And the water will help to keep that paint fluid and, and it, it, having the ability to move while you are fading it in towards that center. And just don't scrub hard. If you scrub hard, then you'll lift it off, but just a light kind of rubbing will work. And then I just need a little bit of a shadow for my, for my stems. So I'm going to try and give them um, a similar way about them. So this one I'm going to have kind of coming in this direction. So again, I'm just using black plus a touch of water on my brush so I can keep that fluidity. I've got this guy in through here. And again, these are all skewed um, because they are shadows and they're long and mine because you know they've they're coming through that glass so that can skew them a little bit so that's all i'm going to do for those guys i'm going to come over to these little ones on the right so just a little bit of black plus water on my brush if you want them to look tall you can put the um shadow kind of coming back quite a bit so i'm going to just put a little shadow underneath here just scooting it under there and then maybe disconnecting it right here and then just fading it out towards this this left hand side so something like that works for me we got this little this little piece up top that's poking out so i'm going to try and represent that as well that works then i'm going to go ahead and go on to the next one so these little guys they certainly don't need as much detail as your um as your vase but you know if you want there to be that sense of realism to it you want to make sure that you kind of attend to everything in the in the same intensity or in the same manner so like that and then maybe this little guy has his own little shadow in through here then i'm going to wash and dry my brush yeah that's cute i'm going to wash and dry my brush i'm going to pop on a little bit of highlights on through here so the areas where i have the magenta i'm going to pick up pink and white on my brush at the same time and then just kind of cross over give myself a little pop of of highlight in through there now i'm going to pick up blue uh cobalt blue and white at the same time and i'm really just kind of popping in these little bits of highlights just to make sure that we've got some sort of um detail to them but these petals can be all different kinds of shapes so that's why i'm just kind of having fun with this and then we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put your small brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the petals on our flowers so i'm going to be using my medium brush the colors that i'm going to use are magenta blue and white I might go into my black a little bit as well, but um, in my head right now, I'm not going to, but I might end up doing that. So my goal is to give these a lot of texture and a lot of dimension. I'm going for a more impressionistic kind of petal to them, meaning I'm gonna be using some freestyle type of brush strokes and not terribly concerned about them looking exactly like hydrangea petals hydrangea petals come in many different ways and they can be wiggly but there's a ton of them like all tucked in sometimes you can see them head on and they almost look like a single flower with like five petals on them so i'm going to give you a couple of different suggestions or ideas for paint brush strokes once we get into it and and you can kind of utilize a multitude of strokes in order to get this really freestyle uh, representational style of petals for these hydrangeas they are the petals are inherently kind of rounded they have like round edges so i'm going to be utilizing this brush to create a lot of round edges i want them to have form so we've already started that with the darkness on this bottom on the bottom side of them and we're going to be putting a lot of light up on the top 
but not necessarily just at the edges. I want them to look round so they'll have a, a lighter area in through here and on the top, and in through here and on the top, in through here and on the top. So that way that'll give them a lot of roundness. I'm gonna be using all the colors that we've, we've spoken of, but I will be doing maybe, this one will be a little bit more blue, this one will be a little bit more pink, and this one will be a little bit more of the purpley tones, but I'm gonna have all tones in each of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my kind of putting my first pass on the petals, because I'll do a first pass and then I'll come back and maybe touch up little highlights here and there. I'm gonna start with, uh, let's start with this one. So I'm gonna put uh, pink, blue, and a tiny bit of white paint all on my brush at the same time. So I'm going to show you the basic um, brush stroke that I'm going to use a lot in this, which is going to be taking my brush at, with two or three colors on it. And what I do is I'm going to kind of be quickly doing a little bit of a circle type of brush stroke. So for, for this one, I've got like four little petals in, represented in that one kind of flower. I will, as, as I go through this, my paint will sometimes look a little bit more um, kind of blended. So if that happens, you just kind of pick up on another kind of color to it. And this is gonna give me that illusion of that style of flower. So what I'm doing is every time I go to pick up paint, I'm picking up a different, com a different type of combination. Like this time I picked up more paint, uh, magenta, and white and you'll hear me probably call the the magenta pink a lot because that's it's a dark pink to me in my head but i am utilizing all four of the or all three of these colors the magenta blue and um white and then as i go through this you know maybe maybe as i'm getting down towards this darker area maybe i just pick up more more blue on my brush you might not even need to do that full kind of circle type of um, brush stroke as you're getting down into the deep dark areas of the flower you may find that you you know just want to make little quick marks in order to um, get it to do what you want you can bring some of these outside of your um, your footprint and I'm going to do some real bright ones in through in through this kind of top right area of each one of the um, one of the flowers so that's looking pretty good to me I mean I don't really need to do a whole lot you could always come back and maybe put a little dark dot in the center of some of these if you wanted to but that's totally not necessary but if you wanted to you certainly could down on this one I'm going to be using my blue and my pink or my blue and my magenta just to kind of get some of these um, brush strokes started and in a second I'll use a little bit more white maybe now I can use a little bit of blue and white and again I'm I'm using all three of those colors to give me an assortment of these um, of these different color values within these flowers. I am consciously making sure that I keep some of those dark areas within my flower, like even that one, I just accidentally kept a little dark area in the middle, so that made that one look nice and like I put the whole flower on there. You you know, so you, by being carefree like this, you're going to accidentally create not accidentally, but on, on purpose, in a, in a controlled manner. You're going to create these light spots and dark spots, provided you can keep yourself under control. I know with me when I'm doing flowers, sometimes I just am, am going so fast, and I'm like, oh, I just want to make these pretty marks here and there, like down and through here. So I knew that I wanted this darker, so I backed off on my white. So as I'm going down in this dark area, it remains darker. If I want it, you know, more purpley, I can add more of the magenta and the um, and the blue. So I can change these values a little bit, but all the while I know I want there to be lightness up at the top of each flower. So I'm putting in a little bit more lightness up and through here. And you can go over, you know, multiple flowers if you want to. Just keep keep playing with those the edges of them. I'm going to move over to this one now. This one's going to be more blue and white is going to be my my color combination and I can start off with a couple of these you know real identifiable 
ones with blue and white on my brush and once I've got these ones maybe I will um well, that didn't work out the way that I wanted. There we go. <laughs> Once I've got these big ones in through here, then, you know, you just kind of start with your mark making all along the sides. Maybe maybe I use a little bit more of, of the pink in through here. The, again, the beautiful part about these flowers is I can have pink and blue in one of them. You know, you don't necessarily need to have just one all blue or one all pink. You know, you can just have fun with, with the way that you're creating um, and the colors that you're imposing in, in, the, in the flowers. So if I wanted, you know, more, more pink represented underneath here, I can just start with my, with my dashing and my dabbing. And again, I just keep flipping back and forth between my blue, my um, magenta, and my white in order to get these. But once I've got those main ones in place, I, I just start kind of mark making. And this is going to allow for those little petals to kind of pop out. And then once I've got this in here, I will start to maybe get a little bit more detail on my edges. So I've got Lots of nice color in through here. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white to get some white ones over here. Maybe white and blue to get some uh, to get this one to look maybe a little bit more bluer than the other ones. So again, just having having the um, kind of the idea that you want maybe one a little bit more blue, or maybe one a little bit more pink, or maybe one a little bit more purple. That will help to kind of allow these to look a little bit different from one to the other um, and you may not see the edges of you know of each one individually that's totally okay you know you can have if, if that's the case you can always add a little bit more shadow in one if you're having difficulty seeing the edge on um, next to the sky you just want to add a little bit more um, contrast with the colors and then I'm just going to kind of keep playing. So if I want there to be, again, more, more blue, going to get my little edges to pop out in through here, I can use a little bit more white in order to maybe scoot in these little, you know, these little kind of ripply edges every now and again. So the, the petals can inherently be nice and, and round, but if you want there to, you can have little ripples here and there. I think I'm going to put some more pink ones up and through here. This is where I would just kind of start fiddling. So if I want, I just washed and dried my brush. If I want there to be more pink up here, I just uh, put a little bit more pink and white on my brush or magenta. And then you can start like if I finding petals to enhance that, you know, you might want to be a little bit more vibrant and you just keep adding those little bits of information. You can get them to be lighter or darker. Like I feel like I want these little edges to be lighter and you can you could use your smaller brush, too, if you felt that you were, you know, were struggling with the size of this brush or you wanted to have little you know a little bit more fine-tuned detail and have little additional ripples you can certainly move into a smaller brush and just kind of get those to to happen for you but that's looking pretty good i've got my light up here i've got my light over here and then maybe a little bit more lightness around this edge here just so we can we can see the difference between this flower and this flower and then i would just I, like I said, keep fiddling. So if, you, if you're going about this and you want to add more lights or darks, you can always add additional darkness in between those petals. Let it dry, look at it from a distance, and when you're all set, we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna go bottom right on this one. I'm using my small brush. I'm using black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. It's totally fine because it's your painting. 
and you get to sign it however you'd like to. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself some beautiful seaside flowers and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.